Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is set to pay a dramatic surprise visit to the White House in a short while from now. Zelensky's first U.S. visit after the war began is reported to be about rallying Ukraine's top international partner and pushing sustained military and economic assistance. President Biden is set to announce nearly $2 billion in additional assistance to Ukraine, including a sophisticated Patriot missile system. Zelensky will also address members of the U.S. Congress at the Capitol. At least on the face of it, Zelensky's trip underscored U.S. support for Ukraine. $50 billion have already been sent in. The World Bank has approved an additional $610 million in package. But there remains a buzz on another dimension as well. Watchers point at the Biden-Zelensky phone call in October, when Biden was muffed with Zelensky's demand for increased aid. Biden had differed with Zelensky on strikes into Poland coming from Russia. Questions have been raised on whether the meet is more about public applause, but pressure in private. It also comes at the back of UK's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak ordering of a review on Ukraine expenditure and Italy's minister expressing reservations on continued military aid. Ahead of Zelensky reaching the U.S., the Kremlin warned that further weapon deliveries to Ukraine would only aggravate the conflict. For more on this, we are joined by a political commentator, Mark Merowitz. Mark, thank you so much for joining us on We On. Well, here's a surprise visit just before the holiday seasons from Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky to Washington. What can we make of this? Look, uh, the bottom line of all this is uh, Reagan state, you know, the Tip O'Neill, all politics is local. What's going on now is a transition into Republican controlled House of Representatives. If you look at this book called the U.S. Constitution, you know that all revenue, money, uh, bills must originate in the House of Representatives. And the Republicans have said, many of them, including Lita McCarthy, who is possibly the next speaker, that there is no blank check for Ukraine in terms of expenditures. So that's the first point. The second point, so their worry is, and that's why they rushed the trip to get Zelensky here before January when the House turns Republican to see, to build support in the House and in the American people. Second point is that the Americans have not agreed to provide offensive weapons like long range artillery, but they are going to provide patriots for defense. So here's the issue. And what's really going to happen? I'd love to be a fly on the wall. They're going to talk about diplomacy. They're going to try to end this. But the problem is it's a catch 22 because if Putin is win thinks he's winning, he won't want to negotiate. And the only way the Ukrainians can win is by getting offensive weapons. So we're in the middle of a very tricky situation. So the game plan for the trip is Zelensky comes here, speaks to Congress like Churchill did in World War II, builds support to try to help the Ukrainians to get over this line to get the weapons that they need to bring this war to an end. If they can't do that, there is no impetus for Putin to negotiate. That's, I think, where we are. Yeah, very interesting. And, and you know, you mentioned the divisions between the Republicans and Democrats. The Republicans, for the most part, they say that they want to support Ukraine as much as possible. But as you mentioned, and many Americans feel this way as well. Less than 1% of Americans really see Ukraine as a top priority right now with everything that's going on in the country. Uh, but with these divisions, do you think that Vladimir Zelensky's trip will be, quote unquote, successful, at least in the eyes of himself? Zelensky is a master politician. He has shown this by his Skype talk, uh, virtual talk to Congress, to the UK Parliament, to the Israel Parliament, to people all over the world. He is a master. He's also a former actor, so he has you know, potential like Reagan to really communicate very well. And that's the purpose of the trip. But I happen to look around the Twitter universe 
and read a few statements by some Republican Congress people. And what are they saying? Zelensky's coming to the U.S. to collect tax dollars from the American people. Just understand that the far right constituency of the Republican Party is a very much an a Un unenthusiastic about continuing to spend money on this with an end not in sight. So I do think Biden has a very, very serious um, in, imperative to try to figure out a way to bring this to fruition. I don't think there will be sentiment in terms of all the economic problems in the U.S. and Europe, etc., to keep pouring money into this, billions and billions of dollars, when there are so many problems domestically. And furthermore, the energy crisis is really coming as the winter gets colder and colder. So the point is, um, getting this to end is what this is all about. But in the meantime, uh, Biden wants to build support even among Republicans in the Congress. And the way to do that is have Zelensky come and speak. He's a, a very, very effective communicator. Uh, McConnell is a big supporter. We don't even know who the Speaker of the House is going to be. Will it be McCarthy? Will it be Scalise? But the point of the matter is Republicans are of a, a different viewpoint on this. And they will also have a divided government. And as I said before, money bills have to start in the House. So the House is the people's house controlling the spigot, the money. And there is where the Biden's conundrum is right now to try to make this happen, bring this forward, at least bring Putin to a standstill. So he wants to negotiate. The Patriots, by the way, will be very, very important, very helpful. And also these bomb kits that uh, convert the bombs into smart bombs. Very helpful. But in order to really end it, Zelensky needs the long range artillery. There's no question about it. And I think all the military people say that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for joining us on We On. We'll be watching this trip very closely. Uh, and we hope to see you again very soon. Mark Mirowitz, political commentator, joining us.